See, the relationship is the key to hearing God's voice. I know my wife's voice because I have a relationship with her. Right? The other voice I might not know, not recognize immediately because I don't have a relationship with them. That which means I don't hear them constantly on a daily basis. But when my wife calls me on the phone, I know exactly. She doesn't have to say, yo, this is your wife, Mrs. Jack. No, I know exactly. As soon as I hear her voice, I know, oh, it's Mrs. Annie. That's my beloved. Hallelujah. Relationship is the key to hearing God's voice. And by the way, relationship is spelled T-I-M-E. Time. If there is no time in your relationship, there is no relationship. Hallelujah. Amen. So what's the, let me ask you this question too. What is the difference between a believer and a non-believer? Believer have a personal relationship with the Father. They communicate. They spend time. Amen. And, this, and because of the relationship, He calls us by name and we know His voice. And when He calls, he, we know exactly who's calling. Amen. Notice John 10.3, it says, He calls His own sheep by name and leads them out. Own sheep by name and He leads them out. By what? Voice. Voice. John 10.27 says, My sheep hears My voice and I know them and they follow Me. The word hear means to hear and to understand. It's not just you heard something. No. To hear and to understand. So I want to talk to you about hearing God's voice, okay? And obstacles to hearing God's voice. John 10, 27, it says, My sheep listen to my voice and I know them and they follow me. Well, let me give you briefly three things about the ability to hear Him, okay? Three things and I'll go to obstacles, okay? Number one, it's innate. It's innate, which means you are born with it. It's in you. It's inherent. It's natural. It's built in. It's hardwired. It's instated. It's in you. Amen. As a believer, it's in you. You can hear His voice. Hearing God's voice is innate, number one. Our God is a speaking God. You need to understand that. The reason why you have the ability to hear and speak is because you were created by a hearing and speaking God. Amen. Now, why would God create someone with the ability to communicate and not communicate with you? Make no sense, right? And this is what separates us from the animal kingdom. Animal cannot speak. God created us to communicate our deepest feeling not only to one another, but also to God. Animal can communicate, listen to me, but not to our level. Now, let me share something from our, from our family. My wife doesn't like pet at first. That's the word, at first. That's the key word. She doesn't love pet. But then when we got Nola, something changed. <laughs> Suddenly, as soon as she saw her, she hugged her in her, in her hand. And I was thinking, oh, really? It's Allah. Indeed, it was Allah. And see, our dog Nola has so much attached to her, not only to us, but to her especially. She would be thinking about her food. If she doesn't eat, she'll get restless. Not Nola, she will get restless. <laughs> she'll be thinking, now what do I do? Give her some liver? No, it doesn't work. Give her some tin fish? It doesn't work. Give her some eggs? Doesn't work. We have to buy. What was it? Pedigree. Pedigree. Chicken gravy. That's what she likes. She's more concerned about the dogs than our boys. <laughs> yeah, even my son is testifying, yes. <laughs> now, our dog Nola doesn't communicate when she's hungry. We know when she's hungry. We communicate because we are created to communicate 
and hear the voice of God. You need to understand. It's innate. Number two, it's learned. You are born with it. But you need to learn how to hear from God. Even if you're born in it, you need to learn. For example, let me give you an example. Children are born with the ability to communicate, right? But they need to be taught. They need to be taught words. They need to be taught sounds. It's not like, it's, it, it, uh, it's, it's like you know, how to say it, when to say it. Language is grammar. Isn't it, right? They need to be taught. Though they have the ability. Um, the disciple asked Jesus, teach us to pray. What do you mean teach us to pray? As, as I was reading this, what do you mean teach us to pray? Because the Jew already knew how to pray. Isn't it, right? Look in the Old Testament, you will see it. But, here's the things. No one prayed like Jesus. It's like, when, he, when, he was, when he's praying, it's like he's talking to a person. It's like he's communicating to a person. And he was. Amen. God never intended prayer to be giving off to-do list every morning. You know how we pray? We pray, God, I have this thing. Now bless me, bless me, bless me. I have to go to the gym. Bless me so that I can do well, so that I can finish my, whatever the, 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 the timing that I have. Bless me. I have these things to do. Bless me. I have to go and speak to this person. Bless me. Guide me. To-do list. But it's more than that. Hallelujah. Now listen, listen, listen. Let me say this. If someone calls you on the phone, and talk for 10 to 20 minutes and then hung up before you speak. How would you feel? Weird, right? Right? You feel the same way. Do you know that many of the Christians does that every morning? Thank you, Lord. Imagine, imagine this, someone who knows nothing of his future, talking to someone who knows everything about the future. He knows your future better than you can remember your past. He knows everything. And you are talking to the one who knows everything. So, communication means shut up and listen. Amen. Number three, it's mature. It's innate, it's learned, and it takes maturity. Does children need to mature in the communication skill? Yes or no? Yes, right? Because children often say stuff they are not supposed to say. Like, what happened to your nose? For example, right? She, they say something and then it's too big. Or, you know, is that pimple or what? You know, all those kind of, how old are you, grandma? Why are you too fat? All those kind of stuff, right? Parents, they usually get embarrassed when children come up to me. You know, they, they'll look at me and then, and then they'll... What happened to your leg? <laughs> they do that. One time I was in, Ko I think I was in Koima, and then I, 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 I was just visiting someone, you know. Then this girl came out, and she, she was looking at me strange, you know. Every, everyone do that, you know. So they said, what happened to your leg? And then her mom was embarrassed. I'm, oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> you don't say that. You know? <laughs> so I said, well, it's a long story. Because I take it lightly, you know, I get that. So I tell them, okay, you want to hear the story? It's a long story. It's about World War II. <laughs> and they would listen. They would literally listen. Amen. We have to teach them what to say and when to say. All right, coming back to the obstacles of, to hearing God's voice. This is the one I want to get to you. Listen. One of the biggest enemies to hearing God's voice in your life is... B U S Y N E W -S, S. Business. Period. You're too busy. That's the main obstacle. Let me say this the one who seek after his heart is the one who gets to hear his voice. You, you need to write this down. The one who seek after his heart is the one who gets to hear his voice. 
Don't ever forget it. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 29, 13, what does it say? You will seek me and find me when you search for me or you seek for me with all of your heart. That's what the Bible says. You need to seek him with all of your heart. Then you will find him. Hallelujah. Casual, listen to me, you might want to write this down too. Casual Christians will become casualties of life. Casual Christians will become casualties of life. Have you ever heard about someone with lots of potential? Because no one is born without potential, okay? Everyone is born with potential. I thought he, had, or, I thought he or she had lots of potential. But they just vanished. Have you ever heard that? While growing up, you saw this guy and then he had lots of potential. But now he's, he's a bump. Or she's a bump. See, God will show you your potential. Listen. But He is not obliged to fulfill your potential. You are. God will show you your potential. But God is not obliged to fulfill your potential. You are. He will show you. Now you have to live up to it. For example, let me give you an example. Write down this verse, Joshua 1.8. Remember the famous verse, Joshua 1.8? It says, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. That means you should read it, right? Everybody say, read it. So it says, read the word. Memorize the word, actually. And you shall meditate on it day and night, and you may observe to do it according to... To do according to all that is written in it, for then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. Okay, read the word, memorize the word, meditate on the word. Everybody say meditate. meditate. And number three says, do the word. Everybody say, do the word. Do the word. When you do the word, you make your way prosperous and you will have success. All right. Listen to me. You want to write, write this down, okay? Write this down. When you read the word, you will see your potential. When you read the Word of God, you will see your potential. When you meditate the Word, re you rewire your mind of your potential. Are you getting what I'm saying? When you read the Word, you see your potential. When you meditate on the Word, you rewire your mind of your potential. You need to rewire yourself, your mind, of your potential. For example, let me give you an example. The disciple of Jesus, right? The world saw them as fishermen. Right? But Jesus saw them as fishers of men. Jesus saw leadership, communicators. Jesus saw history makers. And in the book of Acts, it talks about the world notice these guys, these 12, 11, 12 guys, they turn the world upside down. How? They have been with Jesus. They not only saw their potential, they rewired their mind of their potential, and they lived their potential. Hallelujah. Amen. When you do the word, you will live your potential. You will be prosperous and you will have good success. Prosperity and success is a byproduct of fulfilling your potential. It's a byproduct. It's being who you, I mean, it's being whatever God wants you to be. But you should be willing and obedient. So what are the obstacles to hearing God's voice? Luke 8, 7. I want you to turn with me to Luke 8, 7. I want you to see something here. All right. Luke 8, 7. It says, Some fell among the thorns, among thorns, and the thorns sprung up with it and choked it. Everybody say, choked it. Okay. All right. This is talking about the seeds of God's word. Okay. The word of God is seed. The seed is God's word. And the word must be sown into man's heart. It must be sown. Amen. Amen. Now, listen to me about, uh, regarding seed. 
the seed, the word of God, has the ability to produce what God has said. But the seed, listen to me, is dependent on the conditions of the soil. You may get the best seed. Maybe you got it from Jamaica, where we get the, the best coffee. Maybe you got a seed from Jamaica. I know you brought it over in, in, in Dimapur. Maybe, let's say Dimapur. And then you plant it. But if the soil is not rich, not good, guess what? Even the best seed will not be able to produce good fruit. Right? Amen. So what's the condition of the soil? What's the condition of the heart that it needs to be? James 1.21 it says, James 1.21, it says, Receive with meekness the implanted word. Meekness is not weakness. Meekness is strength under control. That means you have strength, but you are under control. Hallelujah. So receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. Save your souls. When you get saved, when you got saved, your spirit gets saved. Your spirit comes alive. Alright? But your soul doesn't get saved. Your soul is your mind, will, and emotions. So the only way your mind, will, and emotions to be saved is through the Word of God. That's why we, re we need to renew our mind. Amen. See, humility... Listen to me. Humility is the key to receiving the seeds of God's word into your heart. Humility. You cannot receive anything from God without humility. Never. If you want to receive anything from the Lord, you need to receive it with humility, humbleness. See, humility is not looking down on yourself. Humility is looking up to the one who make you stand. Who can make you stand. Hallelujah. Now, let's see another verse. It says, Luke 8, 14, Passion Translation. It says, The seed that falls into the weed. Everybody say, into the weed. What are the seeds that fall into the weed? What are the weeds? Let's say. The weeds are, let's say, plan B. In case it doesn't work. Have you ever done that? In case. I'm in need of money. Let me pray. After he's done praying, let me call my uncle also. <laughs> in case it doesn't work. Have you ever done that? So you have something in your, if you don't feel good about your body, and then you pray. Lord, you said by whose stripes you are healed. So I, I, I pray, and then I, I, I bind that in the name of Jesus. But you search your drawer. Huh? In case, in case, just in case. Weeds are plan B, or backup plan, or backup words, just in case the word doesn't work. Let me say this, you want to want to hear this. A good idea is not God's idea. A good idea is not God's idea. Let me say this. Isaac, remember Isaac? Father Abraham, Bajabisi. Right? Remember the song? Right? So Isaac was God's idea for Abraham and Sarah, right? Right? Isn't it? You agree? Ishmael was a good idea. What was God's idea? Isaac. You believe me, right? I'll give you a son, I'll give you an heir. And from that air will, I mean, millions, right? You'll have descendants, right? That was God, God's idea. Then, suddenly, Noe, Iman Salusi, they are trying their level best. Ki ki ki, kure se Noe, jare buti aha ni mangkhaya se, huh? Amen. Sila jit khan khaya se ku Noe. Right. Then suddenly she had an idea. Hey, Abby, Abby, come here, come here. I have an idea. Looks like God is really delaying His promise, so why don't we do something else? Take my maidservant, Hagar. 
Now that was not a good idea. And Abraham agreed. Amen. Let me say this. We give birth to Ishmael when we get tired of waiting. Right? See, the waiting period is our growing period. You need to understand that. When God is making you wait, that means He is making you grow. So the waiting period is the growing period. The waiting period is our stretching period. That means if God gives you what you are asking for right now, you will not be able to handle it. So you have to grow up to it. It's like this. One guy in the church, okay, he asked God, this is a true story, he asked God for a scooter. Everyone is riding a scooter, two-wheeler. God, give me one. And guess what? Someone heard it and blessed him. But he doesn't know what to write, how to write. Yeah. And you know what he did? He let someone write it and he sit in the back. That's not a blessing actually, right? You need to get ready. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So the waiting period is actually our stretching period. Is God, if God is making you wait, that's a good thing. Hallelujah. Anything that doesn't come from the seed of God's word is a weed. And the problem is not that we cannot hear God. The problem is this, we can hear other voices too. That's a problem. Peter walked on the water, right? Remember that? How did Peter walk on the water? Peter was able to walk on the water because of this word. Jesus said, come. So the word come gave him the power to walk on the water. Amen. Come. He was able to walk. See, notice all the other disciples, they were still in the boat. Peter was the only guy who said, if it's you, bid me to come and I will come. And he began to walk on the water. But he perceived another word when he saw the waves and the wind. You know what the waves and the wind was saying? Drown. You're going to get drowned pretty soon. So Jesus' word come versus waves drown. So that's why he was drowning. He was drowned by the waves in the sea. Without forgetting that he was actually walking on the water by Jesus' word. So what are the thorns? What were the thorns in Luke 8, 14? He says, I want you to see this. Choked off by their own anxious cares, the riches of this world and the fleeting pleasure of this life. Cares, riches and pleasures of life. Everybody say cares, riches and pleasures of life. So the thorns are cares, riches, and pleasures of life. The word cares means, listen, you might want to write it down. The word cares in the Greek word, it means divided mind. That's what it means. Cares. Divided mind. A divided mind is an unstable mind. A divided mind will never receive anything from the Lord. Never. When you are focused, you do things excellently. Amen. When you are focused, you know why you are here. You know, you know then everything about you, everything about you will be lightened, enlightened by God's light and presence. Because you are single. There will be no gray areas. Amen. Let me give you another verse. Proverbs 4, 25, 26. It says, Set your gaze on the path before you. Fix. With fixed purpose, looking straight ahead, ignores life's distraction. Come on. Ignores life distraction. Let me tell you guys, during the winter time, 
there will be lots of distractions. Kujo bo, kujo bo. It's me who was it. It's me who was it. Ooh, music going on, dancing. Oh, K-pop. Ang jara kunga. Distraction. Distraction. Watch where you're going. Don't just go. Okay, what are the other weeds that can hinder you from hearing his voice? What are the other, other weeds? I said cares, right? How about riches and pleasures of this world? Riches and pleasures of this world. Let me say this. The problem is not about the riches, okay? Not about the riches. The problem is not about the pleasures of this world. You need them. You need to sometimes spend time just go and see the movie. That's all right. You need to just spend time with friends and hang out. You need to spend time just, you know, go to a wonderful restaurant and just have your breakfast. Just go have something good. Those are the little pressures of life. Amen. And you need money too. But the, pl the problem is the placement of those things in my heart. That's the problem. Placement of those things. Anything that deadens my appetite for the word can hinder me from hearing his voice. Amen. Rewards are wonderful. We need breakthrough. We need provision. Provisions are required. But I cannot make those things my goal. I cannot even let my calling come in between my relationship with the Lord. That's a sin. I cannot, I cannot let my work come in between my relationship with the Lord. I cannot let my gifts come in between and the Lord. I cannot. Because the day I do that, I'll stop hearing from the Lord. I'll stop giving importance to the Word of God. And guess what? I'll stop listening to the Word of God. His voice. Whenever my heart is pulled away from seeking God's kingdom to seeking only the rewards of breakthrough and provision, that's where the seeds of God's word get choked. It'll get stopped. Like I said, don't misunderstand me. We need breakthrough. We need miracles. We need finances. We need pleasures. Those things were created for our enjoyment. But we cannot live for enjoyment. We cannot live seeking after those things only. Because those things can deaden my sensitivity to God's voice. If you are caught up with doing all these things, chasing after all these things, when God's speaking to you, you will not be able to hear. And you will die. There is, there is this prophet, I, I, I was just listening to an, old, an older guy preaching, and he talks about in the Old Testament there was this prophet. Listen, this is so amazing. This, the, the, this prophet came into a town because this town and the king was living in sin. So this, this prophet came and then he warns the king, if you don't change, you're going to die. And this king took hold of the man of God, this prophet. When he did it, suddenly leprosy just appeared in his hand. Don't just be careful not just to catch hold of the anointed man of God. <laughs> Amen. And then he said, please forgive me. And then he prayed. But the thing is this. The Lord told this prophet, this young prophet, don't stay in this town. As soon as you are done with your assignment, leave. And you know what happened? As he was going his way, the king stopped him. He said, why don't you stay? He said, I won't stay. And he went on. As he was going, this older prophet came out to meet this young guy, young prophet. And as, he was, as they were talking, this older prophet, prophet told him a lie and told him to stay back for the night this is what happened so he agreed he stayed the night so the next morning when he was leaving guess what he was attacked by a lion and he died <laughs> he died the Lord did not do that but God was actually saying, if you stay, something terrible will happen. Just leave. See, God is not against you. God is for you. 
when I go after those pleasures, those riches, this thing can deaden my affection and commitment towards the world. These things can blind my eyes towards kingdom and be pleasure minded only. Amen. Amen. Take heed what you hear. For with the same measure you use, it will be measured back to you. How you hear affects what you will have in abundance. We increase through hearing. As a believer, you increase through your hearing. So whatever you give importance to, you will have in abundance. Anything that you value more in your life is more what you'll have. Hallelujah. If you value gossip, gossiper will find you. If you value foul language and dirty jokes, you will attract foul language and dirty jokes. Light always attract lights. Darkness always attract darkness. Those who value the word will attract word people. Revelation attracts revelation. Insight, if you steward it well, it will attract more insight. You will always attract what you value most in your life. So if you value the voice of God, guess what? The voice of God will lead you every step of the way. If you value the word of God, the, the word of God will keep you safe from all harms and danger. Amen. You will always have. Always have. One, things that I, one thing that I really love to do, I always acknowledge His presence. Because what you acknowledge is what you'll have. The more you acknowledge, the more you'll have. I acknowledge His presence. Every morning I acknowledge His presence. Father, you are with me. I don't feel it, but I know. Because you said you will never leave me nor forsake me. You are with me. Every step of the way you are leading me. My steps are ordered by the Lord. Hallelujah. What you acknowledge, you will have. Amen. So when you acknowledge the Word of God, the more things you will begin to see in the Word. The more revelation, you'll begin to see things that you have never seen. And I'm telling you, when you see those revelations, guess what? God will take you from where you are to where He wants you to be. That means you will be able to fulfill your potential. Amen.